Hello everyone, welcome. We'll just wait a minute or two to let everybody join. Let us know where you're tuning in from today. What side of the world are you in? I'm over here in Galway, Ireland. I'm in central Canada. And I'm in Galway, Ireland. Lovely. Okay, a few are joined in now. Perfect. Great stuff. So thank you everyone for joining today's webinar on SMB Focused Security, a new option for MSPs. We're delighted to bring you this new combination of advanced threat intelligence and bigger margins for your MSP business. So I'm Trevor Stankard, Channel Marketing Leader here at Titan HQ. I'm joined today with Eddie Monahan, Senior Channel Cap Manager at Titan HQ, and Luke Connolly, Partner Manager at MCSoft. So yeah, thank you so much for taking the time for being here with us today. We won't take much of your time. The webinar will be about 45 minutes long. Um, but yeah, it'll be about 45 minutes, give or take. Um, both Luke and Eddie will provide a company overview, uh, followed by a demo of the products. And at the end, we'll be giving away 500 or five $100 vouchers, uh, Amazon vouchers to five lucky attendees. So we'll do the draw at the end. So make sure you're here for that. We also have a special offer today from Titan HQ and MCSoft. So to avail of that, just sign up for a demo um, and you can do so, or you can let us know your interest in the survey at the end. We'll have like just a literally less than one minute survey, two questions, just let us know if you're interested in booking a demo or hearing about the pricing. Um, there'll be time for some Q&A at the end. So you can ask questions throughout and we will get to those uh, at the end when we finish up the demos. And the webinar will be recorded, so uh, we'll send it out to you about 24 hours after the event. So just to give a little brief overview uh, of Titan HQ and MCSoft before we get started, for anyone that's customers of uh, Titan HQ and MCSoft are not familiar with either. So yeah, we um, Titan HQ is a best-in-class SaaS cybersecurity platform delivering a layered security solution for MSPs for SMB clients. Established in 99, Titan HQ is headquartered in Galway, Ireland, with an office in Shelton, Connecticut. Titan HQ or protects the human layer, um, the human security layer, with solutions for email security, DDoS filtering, and security awareness training. MCSoft is a New Zealand based cybersecurity company established in 2003. They offer cutting edge cybersecurity solutions for MSPs backed by a top rated channel program. MCSoft's endpoint security products have won numerous awards and are trusted by businesses across the globe. So yeah, today we're going to look at a new option for you um, on phishing and malware prevention. So uh, Luke and Eddie, it's a pleasure to have you here with us today. I will let you fire away, Luke. Thank you, Treva. It's great to be here today. I recognize some of the names uh, in the attendee list, but not, not everyone. Um, so if you've not heard of MCSoft, I'll start with a bit of background. As, as Treva was saying, we've been around for 20 years now. We have customers in almost 200, 200 uh, uh, next slide, please. There we go. Uh, we've won dozens of awards for the protection we provide for our management console and the ease of use of our products. And um, MCSoft is a really truly global company with employees in 18 countries. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm based in, in Canada. Next slide, please. Thank you. I like this slide because it really puts the focus on you, the MSPs. What do we offer that's a value to you? And I think that for a vendor like MCSoft, it's important to keep this in context because as MSPs, you offer a wide range of products and services to your customers and security is one piece of the pie. Ideally, you make a little profit while delivering value to your customers, but you have to learn and install, to install and manage every product and if it does perform as expected, it risks damaging your reputation. This context brings me to the first of two major messages that I'd like to leave you with today, and that is the importance of ease of use. Security can be very complex, and complexity increases the possibility of accidental misconfiguration, which can obviously have a negative impact on the protection of your customers. 
complexity also imposes a cost on you in terms of the training needed uh, to establish and maintain the level of proficiency required to manage a product and deliver services. So a, a key design philosophy of our cloud-based management console and our endpoint UI is that they offer clean, uncluttered, and intuitive user interfaces. Building a product that implements a lot of technical complexity is, is one thing, but making it easy to use is something else entirely. And because our products have been built with MSPs in mind, they bring some additional benefits like the ability to co-brand the endpoint UI, reinforcing the value of the service that you're delivering in the minds of your, of your customers. Next slide, please. The second major message that I'd like to uh, leave with you today is the value of layered security. At MCSoft, we've implemented a range of technologies to provide very solid protection for you and your customers. The layers of protection that you see on the left of this slide are all part of our core product, regardless of the addition. And by implementing security in layers, in effect, you're stacking the deck in your favor. And what I mean by this is that a threat actor has to be 100% successful every time they come up against a new defensive layer. They may figure out how to get past one technology, but then they're immediately faced with a completely new obstacle with you getting alerted to this activity all the way along. For you, on the other hand, only one of those layers has to work in order for you to be 100% successful and for your customers to be safe. Next slide, please. Uh, finally, in terms of independent testing, MCSoft has been proven over and over as we've won awards for our endpoint protection, our management console, and for our EDR. But one thing these awards don't really show you is something that the founder of one of these independent labs recently told us uh, just uh, in March, actually. After the evaluation of our EDR functionality was complete, Adrian Skybor, the founder of AV Lab, mentioned something uh, that's really telling and reinforces the first the value of my first message, which is ease of use. He said, uh, what he said was, and this was unsolicited feedback. Of all the products that he tested, in addition to performing flawlessly, MCSoft was the easiest EDR solution to install, configure, and, and use. And the other side of this equation is that some of the products that they wanted to test, they couldn't because simply they couldn't get them installed and operational. Um, and, and this just came out, you know, in a sort of off the cuff conversation with them after the testing was done. So I thought it was really important to pass it on to the, to the point where we actually put this on our the EDR section of our website. We have a quote from him on, on our website to that effect. And to wrap up and continue the message of layered protection, I'll pass it over to Eddie and he'll show you how Spam Titan can play a key role in your security stack. Eddie? Fantastic. Thank you very much, Luke. And uh, yeah, great to be here as well. And I suppose just reiterating the, the 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 message that Luke has here, it's all about layered protection, and it's all about different sets of eyes looking at the same problem from different perspectives. And I think that's really really great with providing both solutions, MCSoft and Titan HQ. Um, next slide, please, Sriva. So I, I'm looking at the attendee list here, and I can see there's, there's there's a number of our partners here today who know us well. For those of you who don't know us, let me just give you a quick 10,000 foot view of who Titan HQ are and, and what we do. So um, I'm talking to you from our European headquarters, which is Galway on the west coast of Ireland. And we have our US headquarters in Shelton, Connecticut. And as a vendor, we're an MSP first vendor. So what, what does that mean? It means that we are our route to market essentially is through MSP partners like yourselves. We provide cybersecurity platforms that are purpose built for MSPs to allow you to offer services to your customers. And our typical MSP runs the gauntlet, but typically it's SMBs, SMEs, so the customers that those MSPs are servicing run somewhere between 25 and up to anything up to 5,000 users and all in between. Uh, Today, we were working with about 3,000 MSP partners, 50% of those potentially in North America, I would say, North America and Canada, US and Canada, and the balance then uh, across the globe. Uh, next slide, please, Shreva. Okay, so what, what are we actually bringing to the table for, for MSPs? What, what are those cybersecurity platforms that we offer? Um, we've been around since the late 90s and our, and our history is in email security. So email security is a big, big part of what we, we do. And again, looking at the attendee list here, I know some of you have been working with me for many, many years on our email security platforms. 
Um, and I'm going to talk a lot about Spam Titan Plus, our advanced threat protection email security in a moment. And I'm going to show you also a, a quick run through of our very latest user interface. But before I do that, I just want to talk a little bit about the other products that we have that slot in um, to, to, to email security in many respects. So first of all, Encrypt Titan. Encrypt Titan is our email encryption and attachment encryption platform allows your users to send fully encrypted emails, fully encrypted attachments with the knowledge that they're being received and responded to in a fully encrypted environment. Then we have ArcTitan. ArcTitan is email archiving in the cloud, really becoming popular with, with MSPs that are looking to offer email archiving as a service. Um, if you've got customers in the construction space, the legal space, the um, pharmaceutical space, or anywhere where there's lots of important attachments and emails floating around and where there's a high turnover of staff, this is a product that really slots in nicely. And it's all cloud-based and it's multi-tenant. And then we have Safe Titan, that's the newest addition to our, uh, to our portfolio. Safe Titan is our phishing simulation and security awareness training platform. Again, built from the ground up for MSPs, allowing MSPs to offer phishing simulation, security awareness training uh, as a service. And uh, again, that's, we're seeing a lot, a lot of traction with that at the moment. And then last but not least, our DNS security platform, Web Titan, multi-tenant environment for uh, DNS security and web security, popular among those that would like to offer uh, security, web security to mobile uh, workers. Windows machines, MacBooks, uh, Chromebooks, basically giving those users the same level of protection they get in on the network when they're working from home, like I am today. Um, and then, of course, Spam Titan Plus. Um, and next slide, please, Treva. And, and this is the product I think that sits in really, really well with the MCSoft solution. And as I said, I'm going to bring you through this in a little bit more detail as we go forward. But um, you know, it's it's a multi-layered approach. So you've multiple layers with the two vendors, but then you've multiple layers within each of our products as well. It's a multi-layered approach to email security. And with our Plus platform, we're also bringing uh, advanced threat protection through our link rewriting and time of click protection. And I'll show you that again in a little bit more detail as we go forward. From an MSP perspective, this is a multi a tenant it's a multi um it's built essentially to allow you to manage multiple customers in one place very important that it's easy to deploy and easy to manage email security is something that you should be able to push out easily and manage easily um it's also very importantly cost effective we're, we're, we're quite aware of the margins that we all need to be seeing in today's market in the msp space um but also um as importantly or probably most importantly and next slide please Treva. Um, quite simply, it does what it says in the box. Uh, it's a solid email security solution, and and you know we we've won numerous awards over the years. This is the the latest G2 Crowd Winter report, and also through our customer retention. I mean, plenty as I mentioned, many of the customers on the line here today have been using Spam Titan for many years. Um, so that's it for me for the moment. As I say, we'll come back. We'll have a look at the Spam Titan latest user interface. But uh, now I'll hand back over to Luke. Thank you so much, Eddie. That was great. And thanks so much, Luke. That was a great introduction to the two businesses and how they can work so well together. I'll just change this over now. And now we should be sharing. Yep. Just confirm what you're seeing. Your desktop. Okay. So just as I show you the product, I'd like to reinforce the two messages that I uh, spoke of earlier, ease of use and uh, layered security. And I'll start with ease of use. So the design philosophy, uh, I think I mentioned with, with our products is to keep the user interface as uncluttered and clean as possible. And it starts with our endpoint user interface. You can see that's divided into four main tiles. I can click into any of these tiles and I get access to uh, the settings underneath them. Um, and that same design philosophy transfers over to our management platform. And I have it installed here as a progressive web app. It's a website, but you can install it as a progressive web app, which is helpful because you can then uh, install it on your phone as such as well and have it as an icon on your, on your phone. So you can access your management console as you're, as you're on the road. The first thing that we see, we've got a, ma uh, a 
menu area in the gray on the left, and then we have the main area. The main area shows me all of the customers. We have customers represented as workspaces. So I can see all of my customers. I can choose which information is being displayed and which information is not being displayed. I can save different views and recall them as needed. Or if I wanted, I can click and get a view of all of the devices under my management. I can also um, see a quick representation of all of the alerts in the last month, uh, broken down by the layer of protection which triggered the alert. And finally, on the main page, you'll see that there's a, a tabular summary of all of the recent findings in the last seven days. So I can uh, go into any of those to get more detail. But in terms of ease of use, one of the things that's really uh, can be a challenge for an MSP, particularly if you have a lot of customers, is if you have a complex device, how do you make sure, or a complex service, complex product, how do you make sure that you're consistently applying the proper configuration of all of your endpoints? Um, and of course, templates is the way to do that. So we have policy templates under the partner section of our menu, and we can define multiple templates that we can then apply to our customers. It starts with a root level template, and then we have uh, templates below that, which inherit all of the settings from the root level. Uh, and then they can apply, you can apply your own changes to the child templates. So you can split these up according to function. You can have branded templates if you have a customer that, that uh, it would be worthwhile doing that for. Um, I'll just use the top level template. And the next area of the screen shows me that I have access to all of the configurable attributes that I can, um, that I can control on the endpoint, plus a few additional ones. First of all, there's content filtering, so I can choose to block or not block specific types of, of websites. And then I get sort of all of the settings that are, if I click through the tiles on the user interface, uh, that are available on, the, um, on, on that uh, screen. But if I go to the bottom, there are a few things I want to point out. And uh, again, what, what we want to be able to do is make all of the configuration changes that we want to apply to all of our customers and save them once or maybe a small number of times in different, in different templates. But we also want to make sure that those configurations are safe. So, you know, currently I can go in on the endpoint and I can change any setting that I want. And obviously if you're offering a security service, then there's the potential for the configuration to be changed accidentally, accidentally or maliciously to compromise the endpoint security. So the first thing that we always recommend with our policy templates is add an administrative password. And that means that in order to affect any changes locally, that password has to be entered. And then just in terms of something I mentioned during the PowerPoint presentation, uh, you can co-brand the endpoint. So you can change the logo that appears in the top uh, left of the user interface from MCSoft to uh, own graphic. You can change the branding from whichever product edition uh, you're providing to your customer to your own branding. In this case, uh, we have it here. And then finally, at the bottom of the main page of the user interface, there is a security news section. And we don't use this to cross-sell or upsell our products. What we just provide is links to some um, blog entries on our website that are focused on security related. But if you want, you can choose to hide the security new section, and then that makes this button available, which I can then use to replace the content in that area with whatever you want. So you can provide your own, a link to your own website and a message that might include your own uh, phone number, for example. So just in terms of ease of use, so I have a template here. I've defined some UI changes and I've applied uh, an admin password. Now, if I go to one of my customers, um, and I can get to them just from the management console here. I can also get to them from the main screen. Again, I got a very similar view, but this is a customer specific view. It first of all shows me all of the devices under management. Again, I can customize this according to my own needs and I can save different views, but I also get a view of the alerts for this customer. So what I would like to do is apply that template. And to do so, I just go to protection policies under that customer, under that workspace. And I can see, first of all, that I can define different policy groups. So these might represent groups of individuals within a company who have different security needs. So for example, here I have a development group, an executive group, marketing and sales. And again, you can have um, child and parent policy groups, which uh, the child's groups inherit the settings from the parent. And then the next thing I see is basically all of the same configurable attributes that I saw under the policy templates that are also available in the endpoint um, with one additional section at the top, we have the ability to do a, an 
emergency network or lockdown, and I'll actually show you that in a second. Um, and then a couple of other things, but really what we want to do is apply that policy template. So it's as simple as selecting template. Here's the one that I was looking at. And when I click OK, I see that the management uh, console goes out to the cloud and those configuration changes are pushed out to the endpoint um, immediately. And I can verify that just by seeing that the branding has changed. So, you know, the, the message here has changed along with uh, a link to the website and the branding and the and the uh, graphic have changed. Also, because I did add an administrative password, um, the endpoint is, is secured now. So, so someone can't go in and, you know, accidentally just turn off protection unless they know what that password is. And if they do know what the password is, they can enter it, get access to change any uh, attributes that they want. Uh, they have access to admin mode until they close the application and then reopen it. And at that point, it's locked out again. They would have to re-enter the password to, to affect any changes. So in terms of simplicity, you know, define your configurations once put in, in a template and then push that template out to as many customers as you want. In terms of layered security, so uh, in terms of protecting the endpoint, we saw that we applied an administrative password that'll help to make sure that the endpoint is not accidentally or maliciously misconfigured. The other thing that we have is the ability, if I go to the workspace settings, to change the security management profile from being both local and remote, so the ability to configure things uh, um, locally on the endpoint and remotely on the management console. And I'll just change it to be remote only. And it tells me that this will take effect right away. And when I click on yes, again, these changes get pushed out to all of the endpoints um, associated with this workspace. And now basically I get visibility into the status of the protection and I still get access to the message that I um, prepared in the customized UI. But if I try to click into settings, for example, it just tells me to contact my security admin. So I can't even see what the configurable attributes are. So that sort of talks to um, the ease of use in terms of pushing out um, uh, pushing out templates, defining them once and, and, and repeating them across multiple customers, multiple endpoints, and then layering the protection of those endpoints by applying an administrative password and by uh, restricting the endpoint UI. Now, um, what I'd like to show you is just how our protection itself comes in layers. And I'm just going to start on this uh, on this site, I've got, on, on this um, workspace, on this endpoint. Um, I've just launched PowerShell. And if I just type in, who am I? Like that is fairly benign. It tells me, okay, there's my username, there's my server name. And so the question is, is that malicious? And the answer is, well, it depends. It depends who I am. You know, am I, do I have malicious intent? So we don't know actually if this is if I'm being malicious or not. Um, so what our product does is it logs this in our EDR functionality. So if I look at our EDR incidents page, um, first of all, it allows me to filter based on all sorts of attributes. It shows me all of the incidents that have occurred across this workspace, across this customer. But here's the PowerShell um, executable that I ran and I see in, uh, information about this. So first of all, how is it executed? What's the execution tree? What's the timeline? So I've executed this a few times uh, throughout the day. Um, and then we provide information and links to external sources to help you in uh, doing your investigation. So you can do a lookup on virus total. Well, it's PowerShell, so it's, it's not a malicious application, um, but it also gives you a link to the MITRE attack tactic technique procedure that's relevant to this specific incidence. And in this case, it's who am I? And if I click on this, it'll take me to MITRE and it'll say uh, it might be a malicious actor doing discovery on an endpoint having gained access. So again, is it malicious? Probably not, but we should log it anyways. But let's look at some scenarios where there is actual uh, malicious activity. And to do that, I'm going to go to a virtual machine. And actually, before I um, do anything. I have some actual malware. So I downloaded this stuff off virus total earlier today, but I'm going to go to the configuration for this workspace of the virtual machine, and I'm going to implement that network lockdown. And again, it tells me it's going to take effect right away. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm using live malware. Um, and malware 
you know, tends to do a few things. It'll try to, in this case, I'm using uh, Phobos, so it will try to encrypt files. Um, it'll often try to exfiltrate files to, um, to extort the end user, or it'll communicate with command and control infrastructure, or it'll try to move laterally. So that's why a network lockdown is a really important tool if you're, um, if you're not sure about the status of a, an endpoint or a network. And so I see I have the message here, and I'll just run my endpoint uh, UI. And I'll increase this so you can see it. Okay. Uh, so here's the here's the uh, so the purpose of this part of the demonstration is layered security. So the the here's the malware, and if I run it, it right away comes up and says you can't run it because it's been it's quarantined, so it's identified as malicious, and this is caught by our um, file guard and file guard looks for the signatures of known malware and it also looks for it looks at specific files it looks at uh, looks at heuristics to see if there's anything about the file characteristics it itself which is uh, grossly out of normal and indicates that it might be a malicious file so file guard caught it okay well I have it in here I have it actually in, in the zip file again um, and if I copy it over It'll get caught again. So at this point, it's the it's the user interface, it's the API interface with the operating system. Uh, I just tried to copy it, and the operating system caught it. So again, it's a different layer. It's an API layer, but the file guard caught it. So it looks like I'm not going to be able to um, execute this malware because we're providing protection with our first layer of support. So what I can do on the endpoint is actually turn off file guard. And, and I should um, I should have started this by saying I don't recommend you do any of this at home. Um, this is live malware, um, and I did speak to our lab team uh, at length before I before I proposed doing this or after I proposed doing this. So now I have file guard on, and that leaves um, the, the layers of, of behavior blocker and web protection. So I, I have a separate copy of the um, of the malware here, and now if I try to run it. First of all, Windows will say, and this is another layer of protection, this is Windows itself, do you want to run this? I don't know where it came from. And if I say yes, uh, then it's caught by our behavior blocker. So again, it's an additional layer of protection. It stops the bad stuff from getting through. In this case, in order to remove it, it wants to restart the computer, um, but the execution of, of the file has been ceased. So I won't, I won't actually um, reboot right now. But what I want to do is look at uh, just what that looked like. And if I go back to my management console, I go back to incidents for this workspace, and I can see there's the um, there's the malware itself. It's identified as malicious. And I can see there file guard caught it, and I can see behavior blocker also caught it. And And as before, I've executed this a few times, but you can see that where it's identified and where it's terminated and, and where it's quarantined by which layer. So um, really trying to impress upon you that uh, it, there are multiple layers of protection that are necessary. Um, the file guard it honestly catches over 90% of all malware and then behavior blocker catches another 90% of what's remaining. And even beyond that, if there is someone doing something like, um, I showed you a who am I, uh, but if I do something in in, um, in PowerShell like uh, uh, VS Admin uh, delete, so I think I have it on my no, I don't. If I do uh, VSS min uh, delete uh, shadow. All quiet. So again, this is just, you know, a Windows application. But if I run it, again, behavior blocker catches it. So it's not, you know, the, the file itself is not malicious. The activity is, is what's malicious. And that's what's being caught by, by MC Software endpoint security. And again, all of this is being tracked and logged by our um, EDR. So if if there is a concern about something uh, nefarious going on, we maintain uh, really strong logs of all of the events. So uh, that wraps up what I wanted to show you today. And what we'll do now is I'll pass it over to Eddie, and he'll continue with layer security and show you how um, 
spam titan can can be a really strong addition to your to your overall stack. Fantastic. That was great, Luke. Thank you very much. I, I just two points I said I'd mention. It's actually really interesting seeing such an advanced solution being with such simple ease of use. I thought that was really impressive, and. Um, as you mentioned, like the layered security, even within MCSoft, all the different layers to really completely halt any malware coming in. I thought that was particularly impressive. Awesome. Thanks, Trio. Fantastic. Thanks. Thanks, Luke. Thanks, Trio. Very uh, impressive, Luke. Are we seeing my screen? We are. Yep, all good. Excellent. Excellent. So I'm going to take you through a, a quick view of our latest release of Spam Titan. But just before I do that, I, I want to, because the UI is, it's, it, I think it's fantastic, but you don't really see what's going on underneath the hood. So I think it's important just to talk a little bit about the technology that sits underneath uh, the GUI, underneath the user interface. Um, Spam Titan Plus, really simple product to deploy. It's a switch of MX records. We will give you Spam Titan MX records to, to switch the domain to. When mail starts flowing, what's happening? Well, a couple of the uh, processes here. So first of all, we've got ORBLs, we've got some SPF, DKIM, and DMARC checking. So all of this on the front line. Um, also around the IPs, we have geo-blocking. So you may have specific customers that want to lock out certain geographical regions. That's possible. Um, and that's taken care of by, by our geo-blocking. I'll show you that in a little bit more detail when we get into the UI. Uh, then we've got some gray listing, some other frontline controls, including HELO. And now we get into our AV or virus check. So there's a dual antivirus protection within Spam Titan with um, advanced cloud heuristics included. So every attachment, every email goes through both sets of AVs. If after going through both, there are still some characteristics of the mail or the attachment that look suspicious, but it's not triggering anything, at that point, we'll send the mail and the attachment to our attachment sandbox. Separate environment, we open that attachment, we inspect it fully, we repackage it, and we give a definite yes or no decision. That's a really important feature from the perspective of day zero attacks. Another vector that's that's there, obviously, is links, links within emails, and, and this is where some of our advanced threat protection comes in with our Spam Titan Plus product and our link rewriting capabilities. So what are we doing to links and emails? Well, we're looking at those links as they come through the email, come through Spam Titan, we're analyzing them, but we're also rewriting them and giving them what we call a link lock URL. Now, why is that important? Well, that gives you post protection against post delivery weaponization. What do I mean by that? When that email lands in the inbox of the user uh, and the user clicks on one of those links, it is first going to go to our microservices environment where we're gonna analyze that link. We're looking to see if it's spyware, malware, fraud or phishing, phishing laden. If it is, we send a block page. If not, we allow the page through. And that protection carries through with the email through the lifetime of the email in the user's inbox. So whether they click on that one day, one week, one year later, we're always gonna check it every time. Uh, then we get into our email uh, rule sets, hundreds and hundreds of rule sets. They're looking at every characteristic of the email uh, to see if there are characteristics that would indicate that it's, it's a phishing mail, it's a spam mail, etc. We're going to score the mail based on what we see with those rule sets. You set the threshold, it's typically five. Below five, it's clean, it goes through to the mail server. Above five, it goes to quarantine. And you have the ability to, to run a uh, quarantine, daily quarantine digest to the end users. Um, very quick view, but again, that's, that's, what's, that's, that's the processes behind the UI. Uh, so now I'm gonna bring you into our new user interface. And, and, and uh, Trevo, we're seeing the correct screen here, I hope, yeah? Yep, perfect. Lovely, thank you. A little bit of trivia before we start. Um, this is our latest release, and in, uh, in Titan HQ, we have a tendency to call our releases after geographical landmarks. And uh, I don't know if there's any Star Wars fans on the call, but if you're, if you're looking at this ahead of you, this is Skellig Michael, which is a island off the coast of Kerry in Ireland, but is also known as Star Wars Island. So if you watch the last Star Wars movie, a little island with the beach huts, that's it, that's Skellig. So I thought with it being May the 4th, it was important to, to mention that. 
<laughs> Anyhow, yeah, back to the you, ready. Okay, thank you, Luke, and you too. Uh, so back to the technology. Um, okay, so this is the um, user interface for you as an MSP. So the first thing to mention here is you can come in and obviously put your own branding here, put your own logo and the page title, give it your own look and feel. Uh, administrators, these would be your administrators, your team. You can add multiple administrators here. And then from a, a support perspective, obviously, if you're pushing this out to your end customers, you may want them to have your contact details for the first line of support. So that's where you'll enter the link to your support desk and your support email address. Okay, some of the global filtering policies. Uh, we've allow lists and block lists. Now, obviously, these are available on a per customer basis, a per domain basis, a per user basis. But at this level here, we're looking at allow and block lists globally across all of your all of your customer base. That geo blocking we mentioned, uh, this is where you can uh, create a rule. Really simple to do this. Select a country. Let's just say you don't want to talk to us here in Ireland, so you would select Ireland from here. No, not Iran. Let's say uh, where are we? Iraq, uh, yep. Yes, we're here, Ireland, and you want to block emails from Ireland, but you still want to talk to us at Titan HQ. So you can put an exception in there on a per domain basis, a per customer basis, even a per email address basis. We see this feature used a lot uh, as as uh, as you know some of the situations we have going on globally now. Link lock. This is the time of click protection, and again. Um, Pretty simple to set up and get up and running. I'll just run through some of the settings with you here. Rewrite DKIM signed mails. Yes, you're probably going to want to do that. Follow redirection links. You're going to want to follow those links where they have uh, smaller, shortened URLs with other links below it. So that's going to tell it, follow it all the way through. Um, display a button on the block page to continue to the block site. To be honest, you're probably not going to want to do that. But if you, if you do, it's there. And uh, we're talking then about the block page, show a logo on the block page. So this is the block page that is presented to the end user when they click on one of those links and we determine that to be a spyware or malware link. So you have the ability to customize that block page, put your MSP logo on there if you wish, or if not, perhaps even put the customer's logo on there, but that, that option is there. So, so that's, I suppose, the global settings. Um, now let's talk about how easy is it to onboard a customer. So we'll come back here to the global view and uh, you can see here you're getting a global view of messages processed, clean messages, spam messages across all of your customer base. But we wanna add a customer, so we're gonna just click add. We're gonna say the customer is, for argument's sake, called test, test customer and add. So we'd add there. Once that happens, that customer is now going to appear on the menu here on your left-hand side. So all of your customers will, will drop down here. So we'll, we'll pop into that specific customer. So we can see a, a view of the stats for that customer. So if you're giving your customer admin access to the UI, they will see this information. You may decide not to, you, that's, that's quite okay too, but I know some MSPs where you have a larger customer where there's an admin on site, you may wanna give them a little bit more control. Okay, so now we're gonna add a domain. So we'll click here. Again, let's just keep it simple. We'll say the domain is test.com. Let's keep it simple as well, as we're gonna say that the uh, the customer is in a, an O365 environment or an M365 environment. We're seeing a lot of usage for this platform in, in, with M365. Obviously, you know, there's a M365 is a target for a lot of hackers. So it, it most of our partners are putting a spam titan layer ahead of m365 if it was an m365 uh, environment i think it'll be something like the domain dash com dot mail dot protection dot com or something to that effect um so this essentially is the fqdn of that m365 tenant so some of the settings we just leave it at the default we're going to have rbls spf checking gray listing on and, and here's an area where we can save you a little bit of time with onboarding as well so i do know some products require you to set up a profile for each individual user we don't um, we, we actually take it at the domain level we can verify directly against the m365 tenant so i'm going to pop in 
the M36510 in details here. So what's going to happen here is as an email comes in, we'll check against M365 if, if, if that email address exists. If it does, we'll dynamically add it to the Spam Titan uh, uh, customer and away you go. So it really cuts down all of that. You know, if you're migrating across from another platform, we do a lot of migrations. It just cuts down on you having to create all those users individually. Okay, so at that point now, you have uh, added your customer to the um, to the UI. You've added the domain to get mail flowing. Uh, the final piece will be to essentially switch the MX records across, and then you may want to look at some of the policies for that customer. Do you want to give them a, a quarantine daily digest? You probably do. This is where you switch this on. What's going to be on that digest? Well, we'll put, put spam mail in there. We probably won't put virus mails on there. And if you have customers whose first language is not English, maybe Spanish speaking, French speaking, etc., you can simply change the language here and, uh, and away you go. So that, that is the, uh, the, the customer up and running. So as you can see, very quick, very simple to, to, to get this deployed. Um, and obviously our onboarding team will assist as well. So, you know, if it's a situation where you're migrating, you know, a couple of hundred customers or 10 customers or five customers, whatever the case may be, we've got some shortcuts using our API that'll assist with that. And we can, we can get you up and running in, in, in pretty quick time. Um, just one other thing I want to show you here, which I think is a really big benefit for, um, for, for, for MSP technical staff, and that's our mail history. So this will give you a close to real time view of every mail that's going through the UI. And uh, if you click on that mail here, you're gonna see, first of all, the details. We're gonna see the header details here, when it's received, who it's from, who it's to, et cetera. You'll be able to view that message. But also, I think really more importantly is you'll be able to view the source. And the source really gives you the story behind that mail, what rule sets have triggered, what tests have triggered, what weighting those tests uh, give you. Um, so from, from, from an MSP technical support perspective, you know, when a customer asks you, why is this mail here? Why, why is it spam? Why is it not spam? You're able to see that. You're able to see that yourself and you're able to make, a, a, make an informed decision based on, on what you see here. So you know, as our partners, you're, you're obviously you're a commercial partners, but you're also our technical partners as well. And making this information available to you, I, I, I hope helps. Um, so yeah, I guess really that's that's about it for me on the on the UI. Hopefully uh, you, you found that informative, and uh, I'll hand back over to uh, to Treva. That was great. Thanks so much, Eddie. Again, kind of similar to um, Luke's demo of MCSoft, kind of you can really see the the simple ease of use, which I think is great, and the simple onboarding for the MSPs getting their clients on there is brilliant. And again, I think another takeaway I got from that was the importance of to or of, of of different solutions just making sure you fill any holes make sure that no malware can get in whatsoever having that making sure your clients your msp your, your MS, smbs are fully protected um i'll go into share my screen now again um so yeah so we'll welcome any questions now um just while we're waiting for some questions to come in, uh, just one thing I want, to, a couple of things I want to highlight. Um, we do have a pricing offer available for you. So if you would like to avail of that, you can book a demo on tidyhq.com or you can um, let us know in the survey at the end, just take two seconds, just to let us know if you'd like to book a, a demo or a follow-up on the special pricing. And we'll go back to you straight away with the MCSoft pricing and the Titan HQ pricing offer. Um, and then I'll do the raffle now in just a couple of minutes. So yeah, any questions, feel free to send them in. I have a couple of questions here coming through one second now. Okay. Uh, Lots of great questions coming in. If there's any questions we don't get to, I will send you an email directly afterwards. Well, I'll email you directly with the answer. So yeah, so we have the first question here. And does Spam Titan work with other email providers or just MX, Microsoft 365? 
Yeah, great question, Trila. Absolutely, yeah, I, I should have mentioned that. In fact, it's male server agnostic, so whether it's M365, whether it's G Suite, whether it's Zimbra, whatever the case may be, as long as we can point to that male server we can work with. So yeah, absolutely. And it's possible to mix multiple male servers in the same tenant as well, yeah. Brilliant. Um, can, um, can an MSP have all customers using email security, but only some using email archiving? Yeah, well, the great question. In fact, that's quite typical. Um, everybody needs email security. We'd like to see everybody using archiving, but some customers may need it more than others. So yeah, absolutely. You can, um, with all of our product stack, in fact, you can have a mix and match. It's an a la carte menu, basically. Brilliant. Um, just another question here. How is Titan HQ's support provided? Is it email, chat, or telephone? Uh, we've all options. We have a fantastic support portal, in fact, where you click on a link that brings you through to our FAQ, our knowledge base, you open a ticket, and you'll be connected with a live agent in, 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 in minutes, basically. But we also have phone lines as well. Yeah. Great. Um, in terms of billing, is it monthly or yearly? So I suppose if you could both um, take that one, that'd be great. Luke, do you want to go first? <laughs> sure. Uh, so for MCSoft, uh, you can use either or both. A customer has to be on one or the other, but you can have, if, as an MSP, you can have some of your customers monthly, some of them uh, on annual licenses. It's, you can, uh, it's up to you. The, the thing is that a customer is on one or the other. And, and, and likewise, uh, you, a lot of our MSPs like monthly billing. We support that fully. Um, as you add customers, obviously, your monthly bill increases. You may have a scenario where a customer wants to buy a one-year license or a two-year license or a three-year license. We'll support that as well. So both options are, are supported, yeah. I'll just point out one benefit for with MCSoft with monthly billing is that um, you're, because you're billed monthly, you're only billed according to the number of active endpoints during that month. So whereas with an annual license, you know, you'll buy a license for whichever edition for one, two or three years for however many endpoints and then changing the license as the number of endpoints changes is a manual process. With monthly billing, you can just add and remove endpoints and it's all automatic. You, on, you, you just get billed based on the actual usage during a month. So it's much more flexible that way as well. Brilliant. Um, Luke, one for you. For MZSoft's uh, EDR, is there, any, is there an additional cost or installation module? Uh, great question. Uh, so EDR is implemented across both our business and enterprise editions. Uh, the enterprise has some additional functionality, specifically thread hunting and uh, uh, log retention, cloud-based log retention. Um, but with the enterprise edition, for example, uh, there's no additional cost. Well, for both editions, there's no additional cost for the functionality that you get. There is no additional module to be installed. There's one installer across all of our editions, and it's really a licensing issue what, what gets activated. So the installation process for EDR is as simple as the installation process for MCSoft Home Edition. Brilliant. And just one more final question, because I know we're running a little bit lit behind. Um, so another one for you, Luke. As an MSP, would we work directly with MCSoft or do we have to go through a distributor? Uh, the choice is up to you. So we have uh, distributors uh, in various locations, various geographies, uh, but you can come to MCSoft as well. So I, I know when I look through the attendee list, I, I work with some of the people uh, directly, uh, some people I, I don't work with directly. There's uh, uh, Fernando from, from Peru. Hello, I, I don't think we've met, but you can uh, deal either directly with MCSoft or through a distributor, whichever makes the most sense for you. Brilliant, thank you very much. So yeah, any questions we can get to, we'll come back to you uh, directly. Um, yeah, just again to highlight the pricing, just uh, if you let us know in the survey at the end, and we'll be in contact with you with a demo or pricing. Um, and that's everything for today. Thank you all so much for joining us. Actually, one more thing before I forget. Uh, I was just about to go away without giving away the vouchers. So uh, my colleague has kindly sent me over the winners. Uh, we did a random draw, draw, and I will call out the winners and we will send you an email um, with the voucher. So 
our five winners for a $100 Amazon voucher are Sherry McElroy, Josh McFarland, Mark Evans, Jose Belo, I hope you pronounced that okay, and Darren Hallman. So thank you so much all for registering and hopefully we'll be hearing from you and talking to you very soon. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you all for attending. Thanks, Treva. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, guys. Thank